Hey, what up? It's Emilio Rojas. You're checking out Hot New Hip Hop. Make sure on July 10th you run and get my EP, Life, L.I.F.E. Online retailers, iTunes, all of that shit. But right now, we're about to talk about the first verse for my new single, Imagine That, which appears on Life and is available now on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, all of that. So grab it. Imagine walking out on the streets without cops blasting. And imagine if Mike Brown would have never died. Or what if Goldman Sachs wasn't running the Fed? I wonder, will we have a better chance to survive? Nah, nah, nah. The first couple bars on the verse is like, it's referring to obviously like this huge overtone of racism that's just like sweeping the country, right? Like you have a lot of racial tension. And, you know, a part of that, like I'm attributing to socioeconomic factors by, you know, bringing up the fact that a private bank is running the, the institution that, is supposed to be setting like the minimum wage and the interest rates and helping people live like a comfortable life like you know like the american dream is about quality of life and shit and if a, a private for-profit bank is controlling you know how we're spending money and how we're being paid for our jobs and that's that's not really it doesn't really bode well for us even though the federal reserve in and of itself is a private bank which is another fucking problem already but the whole thing is fucked. I'm just talking about how the system is flawed and it's run by like a global elite class of bankers who really are just there to perpetuate the status quo. We from the bottom, now we gotta stay alive in this. They lock us for narcotics, but the rules do not apply to them. <laughs> we dying off their side effects, antibiotics in our diets. The food should be prescribed to us. The next couple bars I'm really referring to how like we all come from a place uh, where we wanna strive to be something and aspire to be something better, you know? and. Unfortunately, the system isn't designed for us to be able to attain these goals. You know, you got unfair drug laws and narcotic laws that disproportionately target minority communities and poor communities, even though like the use and the, the demographics for like who's using these drugs might actually weigh more in favor of the more affluent places. But, you know, if you live in a more affluent community, you can fight a, a drug charge a lot easier than somebody in, a, in the projects, you know? You know, you got senators, you got all these people, like, look at homeboy from Toronto smoking crack, the mayor from D.C., like, you know, like, all these motherfuckers, they're all doing that shit, you know? Like, that shit is inevitable. That's part of, like, the institution that they're a part of. And they don't, you don't ever see that, that class of people be held to the same, like, legal standards as us. And, Furthermore, they, they take it a step further by inundating us constantly with all these antibiotics and preservatives and these things in our food and in our diet, which are really harmful to our health, you know? And, like, that's why I'm talking about, like, antibiotics in our diets. The food should be prescribed to us. Like, they say animals consume, like, what? Like, I don't know the exact statistic, but some crazy percentage of the amount of antibiotics prescribed in the United States go to animals and shit. And, like, that's not good. You know, like the food that we eat in this country, there's no quality, there's no nutritional value. And I wanted to talk about that, especially in the urban community. Like we're targeted more than anybody else. You go up in the urban community, there's no whole food in the hood. There's fucking key food everywhere. And there's a big difference between key food and whole food. You know, the key food keeps you locked in. Whole food is about like growing, you know, like this shit, this shit is crazy. But how we living in and out of prison? Imagine if they treated addiction like it's a sickness. And you're to jail, making record profit, but I wonder what would happen with dollars for our tuition. The next couple bars, I'm talking about uh, the prison industrial complex in the U.S. Um, basically referring to the fact that, you know, you have prisons that are run by private companies instead of prisons that are public institutions. So when, when something is privatized, it takes the focus away from rehabilitation and places the focus on profit. So you have a prison system that's designed to generate... Uh, profits in the green, you know, so they keep people going in and out because recidivism is profitable, you know, and like going in and out of fucking prison makes people money. You know, you get cheap labor in prison. I know they, they talk about the cost of incarceration, but I mean, let's look at the statistics, right? You have people disproportionately going into prison for like drug related crimes and petty crimes and all sorts of ridiculous things that they shouldn't be incarcerated for. You have people constantly in and out for things like as little as a bench warrant for violating parole, like drinking alcohol when you're on probation, you know, like stupid shit like that. Like, and you're going to send them back into prison. You're going to make an argument that it doesn't cost, it doesn't earn money. Like that shit is a super profitable industry. Later I said, um, I wanted to talk about that. And then I said, imagine if they took all them dollars for our tuition, like an educated population is not a population that's going to be going in and out of prison. That's facts. 
You know, if you have an educated population, you're going to have a highly skilled workforce. You're going to have people that are contributing. And, you know, unfortunately, the education in this country is only placed in certain neighborhoods. Like, only certain people are entitled to uh, a fair shot. And that's a direct result of, like, what's been institutionalized for so long here. And that's a problem to me. And it will be different. <laughs> they don't want to fix it. Because the more we suffer, the more that they're getting richer. My homies got degrees and they barely make a living. Fuck wishing now. Let's go out and get it. I'm saying. So the next couple bars, when I'm ending that verse, I, I'm basically just restating the points that I've been making before. You know, I'm like talking about how everything is about profit. Um, the more we suffer, the more that they're getting richer, right? Like, duh. You know, if you, if you feed us food that is nutrient deficient, we spend more on antibiotics. If you keep us dumb, we go in and out of jail. We put more money in their pocket. If you have a private bank running the Federal Reserve, you have somebody who's looking out for the elite banking class and the the wealthy, affluent individuals who run the world and run this country's pockets. You know, and none of them looking out for us, not one of them, you know. So the whole point of that verse really is just be like, yo, what if it wasn't like that? Like that's really utopia. You take you take the power away from the people with money who will do anything to maintain their influence in finance. I mean, that's that sounds pretty ideal to me. See the sunrise and the moonshine. I look in my sun eyes and I'm grateful two times. There's two types of niggas where I'm from and they both the same. Know yourself, know the streets, know the game, know the pain. Nova came, made me numb. Know these chains made me dumb. Chain me to my brother, hate each other till we 80 some. You know, I'm basically saying that even throughout all the things I've been through. My life ain't been the same while on the run. When this kid said, fuck a message, we just want to have fun. Now I move to the beat that confused me for weeks. While y'all hands high, my head high like, hold on nigga, you lost me. Then I looked at my YouTube views and I got salty Cause I realized my real shit don't get that much love